Welcome to the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Kent State University. The department has 24 full-time faculty members from six different divisions, including analytical, biological, inorganic, organic, physical, and general chemistry. The department offers BS, BA, MS, MA, and PhD degree programs. The BS degree programs are specifically tailored to your interest and the demands of your future career. We developed five different concentrations under the BS degree programs to fit the different needs of our students, and they include chemistry, biochemistry, biochemistry pre-medicine, biochemistry pre-pharmacy, and industrial chemistry. We would like to take this opportunity to give you a virtual tour of our facilities. From our lecture halls to our academic and research lab spaces, we strive to offer the best experience possible for our students. This includes hands-on experience in academic labs, as well as undergraduate research opportunities. Our tour will begin on the first floor of Williams Hall, home to our department. Along with Williams, the department has space in the adjoining Science Research Building and the brand new Integrated Sciences Building. We'll begin in the main lobby on the first floor. The Williams Hall main lobby was part of a recent renovation. Here, you will find some student seating, as well as entrances to our two largest lecture halls. Students take advantage of this area to wait for classes and work on homework, and sometimes you will see student organization tables set up in this space. We're going to go into the smaller of our two large lecture halls, Room 111. Room 111 underwent renovations as well and can hold 126 students. This room is mainly used for larger lectures, as well as our departmental colloquia. We will now move on to Room 110, our large lecture hall. Room 110 is our largest lecture hall in Williams and can seat up to 200 students. This is the room that holds our larger lectures, like General Chemistry 1 and 2 and Organic Chemistry 1 and 2. There is also counter space and a hood in the front of the room to accommodate chemistry demonstrations, which some of our faculty will do to enhance their lectures. We'll now make our way down the hall toward our first floor undergraduate laboratories. The academic laboratories on this part of the first floor are used for the general chemistry labs. There are four down this hallway. Each of our larger freshman level lecture classes break down into smaller sections for general chemistry labs. Each of the labs can hold a maximum of 24 students. The laboratories are led by a graduate student teaching assistant and are overseen by a faculty member with a PhD. These laboratories were recently renovated and are outlined in this diagram. We're going to take a look inside them right now. They were first used in fall 2017. As you can see, each student has a stool at their workspace. There is also storage space for personal items. Most of the required glassware and other small equipment is in the lab for students to use. Any additional glassware or equipment that is needed can be checked out from the chemistry stock room, located down the hall from these labs. Each of these general chemistry labs has scientific equipment and instruments students need for their labs. For example, these labs have ovens, centrifuges, and balances in addition to the glassware. The general chemistry labs also have lab quests, which are instruments that can measure various parameters. Students in these labs use lab quests to measure temperature, pH level, and the absorbance of light. Next, we'll be moving on to the biochemistry academic laboratory just down the hall. 
Please note that the first floor chemistry stockroom is located directly next door to this laboratory. This is used for the biochemistry academic lab. The area was renovated in 2017 and equipped with facilities to encourage interactive learning. Biochemistry majors, as well as chemistry and some biology majors, use this laboratory in their senior year. Located inside this lab are all the equipment and instruments needed for the experiments, including thermocyclers, PCR machines, incubators, a gel electrophoresis apparatus, a blotting apparatus, and so forth. In addition, there's also a carbon dioxide incubator and a biosafety hood used for cell culture work. In the biochemistry laboratory course, students get hands-on experience in experimental biochemistry. The course is divided into three four-week mini-projects in which students will learn DNA recombination technology, protein biochemistry and biophysical chemistry, and RNA biochemistry and biophysics. Experiments are updated regularly to reflect recent advances in experimental biochemistry and biophysics. Just across the hall from where we are now is the Analytical Physical Academic Laboratory. This is exactly what its name implies, the academic laboratory used by the analytical and physical chemistry labs. Like the other labs, these are led by graduate student teaching assistants, but are ultimately supervised by a faculty member with a PhD. Like the biochemistry laboratory, the analytical physical lab underwent renovation and was first used in spring 2017. Most of the instrumentation you see here is used for laboratory courses in analytical chemistry, but also can be used to support research groups. Students that take analytical and physical chemistry courses will be able to gain some hands-on experience with instrumental methods, such as high-performance liquid chromatography or atomic adsorption spectrophotometry. The Physical Chemistry Academic Laboratory also takes place in this room. Some highlights of this lab include the usage of the bomb calorimeter, which is used to measure the enthalpy of combustion. This is then used to determine a standard enthalpy of formation. A favorite experiment of this lab is the measurement of the enthalpy of vaporization of liquid nitrogen. Several of the techniques taught in both the analytical and physical chemistry laboratories apply directly to work performed in the chemical sector. Next, we're going to head upstairs to look at some additional lecture rooms and lab spaces. We'll start in the top right, across from our main office, room 214. Lecture halls 216 and 218 can be found here. The 216 lecture hall is the smaller of our two upstairs lecture rooms. It is located directly across from our main office and our conference room. These smaller lecture halls are used for our advanced chemistry classes, where the student-to-teacher ratio is lower than our general and organic chemistry lectures. Next door to 216 is 218. Please note that this is across from room 208, our undergraduate office. 218 is the larger of our two upstairs lecture rooms. This is also used for advanced chemistry classes. going to head down the hall to the Organic Chemistry Laboratories. We'll take a closer look at one of them, room 229. The Organic Chemistry Labs each hold 20 students per section. A graduate student teaching assistant oversees each section, but they are all supervised by a faculty member with a PhD. Students each have their own hood space to work in during the lab. There is an instrumentation room between the two chemistry labs, which houses the GC, IR, and melting point apparatuses that are needed for the laboratories. Heading back down the hall, we're going to walk from Williams Hall to the adjoining Integrated Sciences Building. The Integrated Sciences Building, which first opened in 2017, houses research and instructional space for the departments of chemistry, biology, and physics as well as the Brain Health Research Institute. This view looks down onto the first floor of the ISB, specifically the atrium area. This space has abundant student seating and has been used in the past for award ceremonies and other events. We'll head down the stairs to our right.
This is a view of the same area, but from the first floor of the building. The lecture hall that you can see through the glass is room 190, which is shared by the three departments. It's considered a flipped classroom, with computer stations set up at each group of chairs. Here is another view of the first floor of the ISB, looking down the hallway known as Main Street. To the right is room 190 lecture hall and some biological sciences academic laboratories. We also wanted to take this opportunity to show you some of our research spaces. Undergraduate student research is a possibility that is available to all of our majors and helps them gain hands-on experience they may not get in lectures. This lab space is in the Integrated Sciences Building, just down the hall from the Biochemistry and Physical Analytical Chemistry Labs. The open lab concept means that the space is shared between three research groups, Dr. Sumitra Basu, Dr. Hanbin Mao, and Dr. Sanjaya Abe. Their research focuses on nucleic acid biochemistry and biophysics. Each research group has four workbenches in the room, at which eight researchers can work simultaneously. There are also two fume hoods and specialized storage areas for chemicals, solvents, and acids in the main work area. In addition to this main room, there are shared rooms attached that are designated for radioisotope and cell culture work. Finally, we have a few snapshots from various research laboratories within Williams Hall and the Science Research Building. Research groups are composed of the faculty member or members in charge, as well as postdoctoral associates, graduate students, and undergraduate students. Our department offers interdisciplinary research opportunities in the following areas of chemistry, analytical, biochemistry, inorganic, organic, and physical chemistry. Research labs are located within Williams Hall, the Science Research Building, the Integrated Sciences Building, and the Advanced Materials and Liquid Crystal Institute. We would like to thank you for joining us on a tour of our department. Our contact information is listed here, so please let us know if you have any questions.